So in Psalm 144 and verse 1, David, who wrote this psalm, who obviously was a skilled warrior, but he was not skilled because he went to Saul's military school. He was skilled because he was trained by the person of the Holy Spirit on the backside of the desert. And I want you to know today that the Holy Spirit is the teacher, and he will train you how to walk and how you should live in this life. And David said, blessed be the Lord my rock. Now, I could just spend my whole time right there on that verse because God is the rock of my salvation. When everybody around you is wishy-washy and you get around spineless believers and those that don't have a backbone to stand on, you can get around the rock of your salvation and God will never let you down. He'll never fail you. He'll never throw in the towel or quit on you no matter how many times you fall and make mistakes. Isn't that good news? He said, this rock my Lord, trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. David learned how to fight as a shepherd boy. He was on the backside of a desert, and you know the story from growing up. If you grew up in Sunday school, you found out that David went to the brook a lot of times and picked up smooth stones and put them into a pouch because he was one that knew how to work with a sling. And he would sling that stone and he would hit targets, probably uh, hit wolves in the back of the head that would try and steal the sheep. And we know that with his own bare hands, he was able to tear apart a lion and a bear. That's a, that's a, a militant man. That's a warrior that would even attempt to go near a lion because I know when I see an alligator, I stay far away. No $2 golf ball is worth losing any extremity over. Just let the nice little alligator sit there and keep the ecosystem in its correct frame and order. So uh, we have to understand David wasn't afraid of wild animals, and he was able to kill the lion and the bear. And basically, he came to a place where he was then able to kill Goliath, but he knew that it was not him. He knew that it was the Spirit of God upon him that enabled him to do all those great feats. That's why when he sinned, when he fell with Bathsheba, he was able to say, take not thy Holy Spirit from me because David knew where the power source was. It was the Holy Ghost and it was the Spirit that was upon him in his life that enabled him to reach this great victory. So the Lord taught him how to obtain victory in battle. God wants to teach you how to obtain victory in the situation and challenges that you're facing. Everyone's battle may be different today. Some may have financial. Some may have health. Some may have challenges in their family, with their children, uh, with their relationship. Whatever it is, there is a battle that's waging, and the enemy wants to use what's going on negatively in your life to discourage you and to pull you out of the race. But you have to get to a place where you can begin to understand that God wants to train you, and training is something that takes time in the presence of God. You're going to see that if you don't hear from God, you can't obtain any victory or battle. I find myself once a week getting away from people, just getting alone with God to be able to hear him clearly because with all the hustle and bustle of what's going on in life, sometimes you can get distracted by many things. That phone that you hold will distract you. Look at the amount of hours that you're staring into that glass. You know, someone said, I want to invite everybody over to my house today for dinner, and we all can stare at our phones. People today aren't interacting and talking with one another. That's why you've got to fellowship with other believers and spend time away from the technology and get to know people's hearts and share your life with others and they can share their life with you. So we must learn how to win this battle, but it all starts with learning how to win the battle in the mind. If you don't win the battle over your thoughts, you can't win the battle over your flesh. Your flesh will only act out what you are thinking about continually, what your mind is meditating on day and night, your flesh will gravitate too. So if you're in fear and trepidation today, it's because your mind has been thinking about that constantly. What's going to happen? What's going to go wrong? What's going to go against me today? And all of a sudden, your flesh is going to experience some physical tremors because of the way that you're thinking. So we must become spiritually in tune with our commander-in-chief and understand, according to 2 Corinthians 10.3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. 
while my battle is not in the flesh, I must understand that it is in the spirit. And if I'm going to win in the flesh, I have to win the battle in the spirit first. 